Good morning, everyone. Welcome to New Testament Survey, BC 103. Before we could begin with our session, request one of you all to please lead us in prayer. to teach us in us. Thank you, Jesus, for the word. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay, so last class we were studying on the Synoptic Gospels, that is the first four Gospels of the New Testament, Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So under that, you know, we were studying on the Synoptic Gospel secret been unfolded. Like first four we covered, we covered on the prophet, four prophetic streams. What are the four prophetic streams we covered on? Under that, we covered like the four prophecies. We talks about, behold, your king was the first one. Second, we saw the gospel of Matthew talks about, behold, your king. And the gospel of Mark talks about the servanthood of Jesus, where it talks about, behold, my servant. The third, the gospel of John, Luke. Gospel of Luke talks about, behold, the man and the gospel of john talks about behold your god and then we moved on to the second point that is four tabernacle colors do you think the four tabernacle colors were very important you know jesus pay, i mean god paid so much of attention even to the color you see there are four colors in the tabernacle veil the veil was compared to the body of Christ. And what are the four colors? One was purple, second was scarlet, third was fine linen, fourth was blue. Okay, and we also studied what these four colors denotes. The purple denotes kingly color or speaks about royalty. Okay, the second color, scarlet, what does it talk about? Anyone from the online, even you all can post your comments on the chat. Yeah. What does the second color denotes? Scarlet. OK, anyone from the on, uh, offline, you all can just unmute and say. Scarlet. Yes, it's a color of her blood. Speaks about pouring out one's life in humble service and suffering. Okay, and the third one, fine linen, which is the pure white. What is that? What does that pure white denotes? Perfect, spotless. Anyone? You said high priest. Yes, yes. Okay, it speaks about the spotless man who lived and he was a perfect sacrifice. Okay, and yes, the third one, the third, sorry, fourth color, blue. What does that denote? Yes, Rin, can you speak loud? Yes, it is a heavenly color, speaks about Jesus as the Lord of the heaven. 
okay so john represented jesus as the heavenly manna as well and the next the third point what is that four faces of the cherubim which has been uh, stated in the book of ezekiel and in the book of revelation so what do we know about the four faces what are the four faces the living creatures yes the lion the ox the man and the eagle what does the lion denote kingly man yes the kingly crown is referred as the king of the beast okay the ox servant or the uh, the animal which used to carry heavy burden okay servanthood the man yes jesus as a man who had uh, the heart of compassion uh, and he was qualified to be as the high priest just like avnina and the others were saying he was qualified to be the high priest the eagle okay it symbol symbolizes the majesty like you know uh, empowers it flies high it soars high above the earth and it has a greater vision you know that's why we say the eagle viewpoint right okay so in the same way god has a bigger view of all of us okay with that we will move on to the fourth point which is the fourth one the four genealogies okay what are the four genealogies matthew traces jesus lineage from back to abraham to king david and how uh, king david uh, uh, lineage has been established through jesus okay and the second one mark does the uh, gospel of mark has genealogy why do you think there's no genealogy because he is writing about the servanthood and they are not interested to know the genealogy of a servant doesn't mean that a servant do not have a genealogy but they are not interested to know okay they just check even in the slave market if you go a slave has been made to stand in a naked form so that the owners will check does he have any scar when he owned does his body have any damage okay they only concern about that particular person they are not concern about his genealogy his background okay so there's no genealogy in the gospel of mark and in the gospel of luke there is a lineage has been traced to gospel of luke the gospel of luke talks about the man isn't it it talks about the man and here the lineage goes up to the first man who is the first man adam okay so luke traces his genealogy to the first man adam for us to show that the last man adam is jesus in whom we have the redemption and the fourth one genealogy the gospel of john as gospel of john has a genealogy yes yeah so gospel of john has a genealogy and he denotes him to god in the very first verse itself he says in the beginning the word was with god so here he denotes the, the genealogy of jesus as he was with god and this word was with god was made flesh and dwelt among us so jesus is god therefore he has no beginning and he has no end this is what the gospel of john talks about okay so with that background let's move on to the uh, the next one that's the four old testament offices the four old testament offices so the four offices that were highlighted in the old testament which points to jesus would be the ultimate fulfillment of each of them so the four gospel also reflects on these four themes so as we talk about it let me um, show the the chart okay so that we all can understand just give me a minute while i move to the chart yeah we covered all this okay uh, even you are looking into your screen you know as i showed this in the last class 
okay i showed you the tabernacle and how the 12 tribes were situated around the tabernacle didn't we discuss on this okay one point that i missed to share last class was can you see the tribes were uh, seated or uh, they were uh, camped around the tabernacle and they formed a cross can you see that this is the aerial view of the camp all 12 tribes are uh, camped around the tabernacle and there is a cross formation so god had the cross in his mind from the beginning itself the cross was not suddenly got planned after jesus been born no he had this from the very beginning itself okay we will go in detail as we study each gospel individually i'll get to explain about it okay these were the four living creatures yeah this is what i wanted to keep open right so as we discuss you all can uh, relate to each gospel okay so the first gospel that is the gospel of matthew which portrays jesus as the king which portrays Jesus as the king. So the first four Old Testament offices, the first office from the Gospel of Matthew portrays Jesus as the king because the office of Christ is the kingship. And the office of Christ as the kingship has been portrayed well in the Gospel of Matthew. E -e -e, you know, even the genealogy, if you see... Uh, the writer Matthew, I mean, he, he, in the genealogy, he shows that, yes, Jesus from the lineage of Abraham. And then he says he's from the lineage of King David. The King David throne was established through his descendant. And then he relates it to Jesus as the descendant of King David, who has been seated on the throne of David. This throne of David has been established through Jesus. Okay. Then we'll move on to the second one. That's the prophetic office. So in the, in the Gospel of Mark, we see that Christ as a prophet or suffering servant and is announced by the prophecy in the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark. So here you get to read the prophecy of Jesus. It's been announced in the gospel of mark christ as a prophet or the suffering servant has been announced in the gospel of mark now the third point here we see is priest the gospel of luke talks about the man talks about the high priest so the luke begins with a priest and pictures christ as a sympathetic high priest who identifies himself with the fallen man because he becomes a spotless man who is ready to sacrifice himself to redeem his people. So in the book, the Gospel of Luke, we see that Luke begins with a high priest. Priest and pictures Christ as the perfect, sympathetic high priest. Okay, with that we will move on to the fourth one, judge. Fourth one is the judge. So the Gospel of John, we see the ultimate judge is God. So through the Gospel of John, the relationship of the Son to the Father is highlighted. And the thread that runs through it, that the Father has placed a judgment in the hands of the Son. That the Father has placed a judgment in the hands of the Son. Can I request one of you all to please turn to Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 22? And one of you all can read John, chapter 5, verse 22. But not even the Father judges anyone. But he has given all judgment to the Son. Okay, please go ahead. For not even you can read 22 and 23. For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son. 
so that all will honor the son even as they honor the father he who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him yeah so in this verse john chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 we see that the ultimate judge is god for the father judges no one but has committed all the judgment to the son you see father commanding jesus to be the ultimate judge and he also says further in that scripture that all should honor the son just as they honor the father so he who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him here god is asking us to honor jesus as the ultimate judge okay with that we will move on to the next point which one is the next four aspects of the sonship the four aspects of the sonship so the uh, aspects of sonship reflects on the four streams that is matthew states jesus as the son of david matthew the gospel of matthew or the writer of the gospel of matthew matthew states jesus as the son of david and mark states jesus as a son of man mark states jesus as the son of man luke states jesus as the son of adam you see genealogy he takes his genealogy to adam the first born the first man okay so luke states jesus as a son of man the fourth gospel john john states jesus as a son of god okay so francis matthew states jesus as who to the son of king david anyone mark son of man nikki luke son of adam prince john son of god yes excellent we can keep this in our mind isn't it it's very easy matthew states jesus as the son of david mark son of man luke son of adam john son of god yes now with that we will move on to the next one that's four difference between the audience there are four different audience this four gospels were written to when we look at the four gospels it is very obvious that the writer uh, took to write for a specific purpose to reach a certain group of people okay it is written to certain group of people this is clearly seen in the reflection of these four streams so we see that the gospel of matthew was written to jews please make a note gospel of matthew was written to the jews gospel of matthew was written to the jews how do we know that it was written to jews because it contains more of old testament references it contains more of old testament references than any other gospel than any other gospel and it clearly establishes that jesus as fulfillment of the prophecy and the king messiah for whom they were waiting for all the prophecies from the old testament denotes that they were waiting for the messiah jesus and writer matthew uh, uh, showcases all the prophecies have been fulfilled in jesus so he talks more about the king and the kingdom than any other evangelist got it okay so the gospel of matthew was written to the jews and it and it portrays and it contains more of the old testament prophecies which was fulfilled in jesus now with that we'll move on to the second one the second one mark was written to the romans mark was written to the romans the romans were not as interested in what a person said as in what they did so they were not the philosophers that the greeks were but they were pragmatists so in mark's gospel we see that jesus 
was uh, uh, Jesus was portrayed as a man of few words and the focus is more on the work on the service that he did uh, like you know the gospel of mark the writer of mark portrayed jesus as a man of action the man was always ready to serve was ready to serve he was always in action serving doing something or the other okay he was uh, mark also portrayed jesus as a man with few words man of few words but more of action just like our servant will go on serving okay and he was written to the romans luke was written to the greeks luke was written to the greeks the greeks were impressed with the learning and the culture luke was the most educated and the cultured of all the four evangelists so his writing reflects as much higher vocabulary in his writing because he was more educated you know who was luke isn't it yes luke was a physician so his writing was also in a much eloquent form when compared to the other gospel writers okay so with that we will move on to the fourth person the fourth john john was written to the world he was written to everyone in this world okay john was a universal gospel and it was written to the world it is interesting that when people give out testaments for evangelism it is usually the gospel of john that is selected when you see the evangelist uh, sharing the gospels or the tracts you see they give out the gospel of john as one of the book for them to easily understand who the person jesus was because in this gospel the writer denotes that jesus is god jesus is the son of god so it reflects the coming of christ as a reflection of god's love for the world and the very famous verse from this gospel is which one john 3:16 that you know god so loved the world that he died for you and me okay With that we will move on to the next one that is the four different evangelist four different evangelist so different people sorry anand i didn't get four different audience we covered matthew mark luke and john okay we'll cover that okay with that we will go on to the four different evangelists just give me a minute please let me see what i'm going back to the slide okay after four different audience next is four different evangelists right ah oh, we will cover that i will cover that okay i was following this uh, yeah i was following these points after four different audience next is four different evangelist okay you're able to see the same okay so we are talking about four different evangelist so four different evangelist so people see things differently from a different perspective of who they are and um, what is important to them so the four evangelists were four different people who reflect a cross section of the humanity and give all of us a point of identification so 
as we look into that we will make a note that we will go into more detail about who they are who they were and uh, when we look at the individual books we will get to learn about each book specifically about the evangelist as well when we go in detail about them so matthew was written to jews who originally worked as a roman officials matthew and mark was a servant to the apostle paul and barnabas and a minister who proved profitable i will tell you in detail why he had to prove profitable when we study the gospel of mark Luke, we all know, who was he? He was a Gentile and he was a trained physician who became a very close friend and regular traveling companion of Apostle Paul. So when we study uh, the missionary journeys or the letter of Apostle Paul, we get to know how Luke was a very good companion to Apostle Paul and how he helped him during his journey and in the time of prison, how he was with him so that Luke understood Jesus through Apostle Paul. Okay, And John was originally a fisherman who became perhaps Jesus' most intimate friend. When we study about, uh, um, when we study the Gospel of John or uh, 1st, 2nd and 3rd John, you know, every time when we study, John always portrayed himself as beloved of Jesus, most loved disciple. Do you think Jesus uh, had partiality between the disciples saying that I love John more than Matthew or than any other? No. Jesus loved everyone equally. But from John's point of view, he felt like he's the most dearest one to Jesus. He felt like he was most loved by Jesus. The same way each one of us, when we share your testimony, when you share the love of Christ, you see, you feel like you were more dear to Christ, that Christ took notice of each of us. Isn't it? The same way John, you know, he was originally, James and John were the two fishermen, sons of Zebedee. And here you see, he, he, he says that he was a most intimate friend of Jesus. He was the most uh, loved by Jesus. He was the beloved friend of Jesus. Okay. And then we will go again to this chart. Mm -hmm. Just give me a minute. <clears throat> yeah. So what do we see from this chart? We see the four prophetic stream where Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four streams, how it has been put, portrayed. Matthew says, behold your king. The gospel of Mark showcases Jesus as the behold my servant. And in the gospel of Luke, we'll say, Behold the man and the Gospel of John portrays, Behold your God. The same with the tabernacle colors have been denoted here, like purple, scarlet, fine linen, and blue. And cherubim faces, lion, ox, man, and eagle. We got to explain each of them why the Gospels have been portrayed according to the four living creatures. Then genealogy. The uh, Gospel of Matthew showcases Jesus as the King of David in the genealogy. Mark has none because he portrays Jesus as his servant. Luke showcases Jesus as the first Adam for us to know that Jesus is the last Adam. Okay, And then Gospel of John showcases Jesus as the genealogy from God himself. So without him, there is no beginning. He is from the beginning. Okay, he's not a created being, but he exists in the beginning. Then the fifth point we see four Old Testament offices. That is, Matthew showcases Jesus as the king, Mark showcases Jesus as the prophet. Okay, and Luke showcases Jesus as the high priest, and John showcases Jesus as the judge. Okay, then sixth one, four aspects of a sonship. Gospel of Matthew showcases Jesus as the son of David, who took away the uh, who, who took the throne of G, uh, the descendant of David will be the take over the throne. Okay, and the Mark showcases 
son of man jesus as the son of man who has come into this world to serve and to be sacrificed and then luke as a son of adam so that he is the last adam and john showcases jesus as the son of god seventh one different audience who were the four different audience gospel of matthew was written to jews gospel of mark was written to Romans and Gospel of Luke was written to Greeks and Gospel of John is written to the world. Okay, universe. It is a universal gospel written to the world. Now, eighth one, four descriptions of Jesus. Four descriptions of Jesus. So in the Gospel of Matthew, he describes Jesus as what he said. What he said as Jesus narrated, he Describe like what he said. And if you see the Gospel of Mark, it describes Jesus as what he did, man of action, as I said. Okay. Man of few words, but more of action. And in the in the Gospel of Luke, we saw that who he was. He denotes him as man, who he was, as a man who he was on this earth. And the Gospel of John. He showcases him as who he is. He was in the beginning and he is the same man. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. He relates him that he was with God and he is the perfect man who is with us. Okay, who he is. He is always God. In the book of Christology, we will more in the subject Christology, we will study in detail how Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. Okay, with that, the ninth point here is four different evangelists. So, in the book of in the Gospel of Matthew, we see uh, Jewish and the Roman officials, it was written to more of them. Okay, and in the book of Mark, minister as a servant. Okay, and Luke, the writer, was a Gentile, he was a physician. And John, he was an intimate friend, he was a friend of Jesus. So if you see Matthew, he was from a Jewish background and he was also working as a tax collector for the Roman officials. Okay, and yes, Mark, we know he was a fisherman. He was a servant. He was a minister of God. So he started to write there. No, Mark was not a fisherman. Sorry, guys. Mark was a, a minister and he was a servant. He, he worked under the leadership of um, Apostle Paul. Yeah. And Luke was a Gentile and he was a physician. And John, yes, he was a fisherman and he was a very good friend of Jesus. He was a disciple who was with Jesus. The tenth one, keywords. The keywords from the Gospel of Matthew is that it might be fulfilled. It, it, these are the keywords which were used often in the Gospel of Matthew that it might be fulfilled. Kingdom, Son of David, these were the keywords that was used. If you go and do a word search in the Gospel of Matthew, you will see very often these keywords were used. And in the Gospel of Mark, we see the three keywords straight away, for, with, immediately. These were the keywords that was used. We will be studying in detail when we study those Gospels. Okay, And look, we see the Son of Man was often used. And in the Gospel of John, we see the world and the Son was often used. OK, with that, we will cover all these. Okay. 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 With that, we cover the introduction of the four gospels. If you all have any questions, please do ask so that we can study together. And the gospel of Matthew, I will start in the next session. That's tomorrow. Do you have any questions from the gospel of? Mark, if you don't have any questions, at least you all can share. What was your learning? Something new that you learned in the introduction of the four Gospels? What was something new that you learned? You all can just unmute and answer, please.
what was something new that you learned in this class? Okay, maybe we'll start with Prince. You can unmute and share one point that you learned that stands out that you remember in your mind when you think about these four Gospels. Yes, Prince. One thing like uh, where he stood out is like how everything is significant and uh, like regard. In colors, how God is so specific, like. we saw in uh, John like John was thank you thank you Prince Nina you want to share what was your understanding what was something that you like God mm -hmm. God yeah everything was actually a new learning for me also all the acts of like uh, every single thing his how four gospels i thought just happened like that but it's not like that and second thing um how god uh, brought them from the wilderness and stay like a cross that's fulfilling in jesus life is so like it's written like it's god and he's in the beginning he pre-planned the whole thing and it's unfolding in front of us now we can see even the cross in the wilderness how they tented that itself, everything is so important. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, Nina, for sharing that. Karen, would you like to share? Karen, Natalia? Pasta, I just joined, so I don't know what the question is. Anand, should you do something for the volume? Karen has shared, but Karen, we couldn't hear you. Pasta, I just joined, so I don't know what the question is. OK, um, Nina, you're asking me to repeat the keywords of Luke and John. I'll repeat it for you. The keywords for Luke is son of man, and John is the world and sun. OK, anyone else would like to share their learning? You can just unmute and share. Nikhil, you can unmute and share. What was your learning? I learn about that mm. four faces. Uh, what uh, what the land denote? Uh, what like like uh, the king and uh, the burden 
and the another one is uh, eagle like that and it was going very amazing and i'm learning so much okay. So, and there was some. Um, I mean, I've always considered the, these four gospels as um, we share the same story. But uh, something that I learned was like, um, like each of them wrote to different audiences, and um, each of them shared from their own perspective, like. Uh, like how um, Jesus is portrayed as a son of David, a son of man, and son of Adam, and son of God in um, each of the books. And that's, yeah, something I learned. Uh, for me, it's like a, a half, like a, for gospel, I read so many times, but I never thought like that. But Bible is telling that I'm the Alpha and Omega, and from Genesis to Revelation, everything is pointing that Jesus is the only one. And uh, sometimes we like uh, when we uh, read Numbers book. Actually, for me, I sometimes just keep those chapters, but the colors also pointing out Jesus only. So this is the thing. Thank you, Rin. Thank you, Sri Radha, for sharing your view. Anyone from our online? Um, Jackin, would you like to share what was your learning? Yes. So for me, it was assuring that you no, know, each gospel was written to certain people groups, and then also at that time, so, uh, God thought about the world. So the Math Matthew was written specifically to the Jews, and then Mark was written specifically to the Romans, and then Luke was written to the Greeks, and then John was written to the entire world, and that was so. Uh, so much of new learning and as Nina was sharing almost everything was new and it was so interesting to uh, link everything whatever I've learned so far with what I'm learning now and especially the picture of the tabernacle that was so much like you know it, it was the formation of a cross so all 12 tribes they were seated around the tabernacle so the cross was in God's mind even in the Old Testament that was something that really stood out to me in the lesson. Thank you. Thank you so much. May I also share? Can you hear me? Yes, please. Go ahead, Nina. Uh, I was amazed to see as to how that God is a God of detail. I mean, whether, whether it is the colors or every aspect that we just went through, how beautifully it all points to the Lord Jesus, whether it is, uh, you know, and, and the different aspects of him is was amazing. And so whether it was the colors of the tabernacle pointing and how beautifully it connects. I mean, the uh, the purple and the scarlet and thing again, uh, uh, connecting to who he was in the four faces. Right, whether he was king or man or servant or God, and how he has made the gospel available to whichever audience. So it's all out there. I mean, if the people so wish to understand and learn, I mean, he did it with everybody in mind. So the whole, every aspect that we touched on, how it all points to Jesus and who he is who he was and who he is and what he has done. So it was a wonderful learning. Praise God for it. Okay, thanks, Nikhil. Okay, I was muted. Okay, 
online students like Karen who have missed last two classes request you to please uh, watch the classes the last two videos from the Google stream which is posted so you will you will it is unmute am I audible Katya. am I audible yes now we can hear you okay 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 Karen, as you said, that you joined the class today. Great, you joined. We have posted last two classes video on the Google Stream. Request you to please go view those videos so that you can you will study on what we are talking about: introduction to the New Testament and the introduction to the four Gospels. Okay, and the students on e-learning who have joined much later, request you all to please post your learning what you learn from these two classes on the discussion board so that we journey together okay thank you so let's end the session with a word of prayer and tomorrow we will study on the gospel of matthew request you all to please go through the gospel of matthew and then so that it becomes much interesting when we study together dear god we thank you for this time that you have set aside that we can study your word in a systematic way. We know and we understand, Lord, that you had Jesus in your mind from the very beginning to redeem us, to restore us back to you. Thank you, Lord, for the great plan that you have in everything, oh Lord. You are concerned of us, the love that you have for each of us, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in today's session. God bless. See you all tomorrow. God bless. Thank you.